Although the hub carrier is complete, I'll attempt to show you how I made it. I turned a block of wood to a size bigger than the pitch center diameter. I measured the pitch center diameter using uh, a method shown in another video, and it turned out I guessed at 120 millimeters, so it's a 60 millimeter radius. I also made a center um, boss that was measured at 75 millimeters, but made to fit. I just kept turning down a tenth of a millimeter until the disc slid over the top of it. This is a rear disc. I think a front disc will probably fit as well, but if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. I don't actually have to use a center boss anymore. The center boss was simply made to enable me to get accurate pitch center diameter positioning. Fitted the disc over. and positioned on one of the holes. You'll have to imagine at the moment that there's only one hole being drilled and the other four haven't been drilled yet. I've made five bolts. I didn't have any bolts this size, so I made five bolts using threaded bar and nuts and welded the nuts on the end. Now the nuts are loose obviously. And I've also made some um, spacers, some ring spacers, because the bolts are 12 millimeter, but a hole in the hub in the disc is 14.75 millimeter. So obviously it's a 14.7 millimeter OD and it's actually a 12.2 mil ID. So I position one of those in there and then locate a bolt. So with the bolt located, now we've got the hub, sorry, the disc fixed to the hub carrier, but it's in no way secure enough to use on a vertical lathe because it would only be pinned at one location and it would have that effect. And so it would only be pinned there, so it could move up and down. I made these. What these are is um, guides for a drill bit, for a small drill bit, 6mm. 14.75 ID, uh, sorry, OD, or outside diameter. So they fit in there. So with this one located, I'm then able to drill through the centre of that using the boss as a guide. Drilled through that, then using a spare 6mm drill bit, put the drill bit in there and locate it in position. With a spare 6mm drill bit located in position, it would be a tight fit because the wood underneath would only have the 6mm hole in, and I'm positioned in, uh, another one of these bosses in another hole drilled a 6mm hole. Took the boss out, put it into another one, drilled another 6mm hole. Boss out, put it in the last one, drilled another 6mm hole. Don't need to bother with this hole. So that's five holes drilled. One has got a 12.2mm hole in for the bolt, and these four would have 6mm holes. At this stage, there's be a 12.2 mil hole here and four 6 mil holes. I would then confirm that the 6 mil holes are actually lying on the pitch center diameter that I've marked out. I then proceed to expand these holes to 12.2, and that would be the hub carrier complete. 
with the exception of making sure that this surface is square when in the lathe. Here's the hub carrier in the pedestal drill, which I'm going to use as a vertical lathe. You can see that the top surface is not running through. And the same was happening with the bottom surface, obviously, because they're parallel. So what I did was I took the centre boss off and skimmed the bottom surface using the tool that ensured that the bottom surface was parallel with the bed. I've put four of the bolts in. What I'll do now is I'll show you putting the fifth bolt in. Just simply put the bolt through from the back and you can see that around the bolt if I manoeuvre the disc enough you can see that the hole, of, the hole in the disc is bigger than the bolt. Now obviously if all five were like that other than, other than the compression of the bolt and the nut the disc would be able to rotate on the, on the uh, disc carrier. This is the reason for the uh, the little boss or whatever it is you want to call it there'll be a proper name for it although I'm an engineer I can't think of the proper name is and then finally washer and nut the nut only needs to be done up finger tight believe it or not five, five nuts and bolts done up finger tight is I found tight enough. With the disc assembly located in the Jacobs chuck, ideally I'd use um, some sort of collet carrier, but I haven't got one. So if we turn this, turn it on. We can see if I hold this closely, trying to keep clear, we can see the top surface of the tool is moving up and down. So the disc itself very little movement. When I've measured it, I've measured it at less than a millimetre at the extreme. I think it's not bad for uh, home brew engineering. Here it is, the health and safety nightmare that is the unguarded vertical lathe. Hundred RPM. Tool post secured in a machine vice with a tool. Skimming the disc. I won't show you skimming it because it's a bit difficult to hold the camera at the same time. And you can only work underneath, which makes it a health and safety nightmare. I love it. So you mount, mount a tool like this for doing the surface of the disc and mount a tool vertically for doing the brake disc on side. All nicely skimmed. And for the final finish up. File. I'm wearing gloves. I'll tell you, I'm not wearing a face mask, I'm not wearing hair protection, I'm not wearing a mask.
and I've been known to do 71 miles an hour on the motorway.